Are you ready? I am ready. Let's do it. How about that? Hey guys, welcome to the shop. I've got a huge problem and that is the most used piece of equipment in my shop will not work at this moment and that is the lathe. Sometimes it'll turn on and work, but most of the time it doesn't. And I think I know what the problem is. In fact, I looked at it years ago. I repaired it, but this time we're really gonna repair it because I've got the actual parts to do it. So let me show you what's going on with my lathe and then we'll get into the fixing of it because it needs, it needs it. I've been dealing with this for a month. So here's a look at my old lathe in all of her glory. I've owned her for about 12 years and it's paid for itself so many times. I cannot complain really about it, about it, the motor dying in this thing. It's one of the few machines in my shop. It is the only large machine in my shop that has a single phase motor in it. And obviously that's the one that gives you problems. Single phase motors, just not as, not as reliable as your three phase motors. They're just got more moving parts. Now this thing, when I go to start it, let's see if it'll do it. And it starts just like it normally would if it didn't have any problems. Just like when you take your car to the auto mechanic, it's making some crazy noise and it stops right before you get to the mechanic shop. That's what this just did. It just showed me up. So trust me, it's got problems and when I need it, it doesn't start. So let's get down in here, unplug it, pull the motor. I'll show you what the problem is because it probably will be obvious once we get it apart. And then hopefully we'll rebuild that thing and get it back in here and have a functioning lathe again. One that turns on every time that I flip the switch, not just when the camera's running. So this lathe would not have came with a single phase motor. But it definitely had a three phase. In fact, I think it came with a seven or 10 from the factory, but somebody for convenience sake and home shop deal, you have to watch out little girl, has put a single phase motor in this thing. It's a three horsepower, I think. I've never bogged it down. So, you know, I've, <laughs> I've took an inch deep cuts with this thing and uh, it does just fine with a three horsepower. So a seven, a 10, I'm not for sure what it would have come with. Uh, five belts is what it would have had originally. I'm running two. Uh, so there's it. There's the culprit. Isn't it, Cora? The problem. This motor. We got to get that out. So this motor actually bolts down to the base here, which is a big pivot. I don't know if you can see that or not. Probably can't. Excuse me. Give me a little Cora. You can see that. When I push her out of the way, she thinks that means come closer. Um, it's on a big pivoting plate and uh, there's some screws and stuff where you can let the gravity, just the weight of the motor, tighten up the belts. And then uh, you can even use a screw to put tension on the belts. So it's really pretty neat the way that they, almost all of my machines work uh, very similar to this. No, not almost all. k and mill works like this. Okay, she's free. Let's see if I can not smash a finger off.
that's heavy. So I think I'm gonna have to put all my back in it. Yeah, so I don't know if I mentioned it, this is a three horsepower single phase motor made by Baldor. Okay, let's see if we can't uh, start tearing this thing down. juice on it. A little juice. And then a little tappage. I think it's a half round key. Come on. moving. Hmm. Yeah. I just have to clean that up a bit. It goes back together. So if you look at the business end of this thing, it's got one of those pulleys on it that cause people to lose their mind when they go to take them off. If you don't have a lot of experience with electric motors and pulleys and stuff, these will test you. They're kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. Not that complicated of a jigsaw puzzle, but trust me, once they get all rusted and frozen up, they'll They'll test you. They will. So because this has one of those crazy pulleys on it, they're good. There's nothing wrong with them. But they are a pain once they get all rusty and crusty. I'm not going to battle with it unless I have to. And bearings in this feel good. So we'll save that battle for another day. And just fix what needs fixed. Let's pull off this uh, back plate. my rag go? Oh, it's on the floor. So this switch is the problem. So springtime's not that far away here in Kentucky. If you look out there, it's still kind of gloomy and brown, but in the next month or so, things are gonna be changing pretty quick. All right, so there's your look at the old switch. We'll get a better look once I get it out and get the wires uh, unhooked from it. And you can see how badly cooked the connections are on this thing. Um, the original one, a little different than the replacement one, a little different look, same deal, made in the USA. This was sent to me by Curtis Sizer, um, a viewer of the channel, probably three, two or three years ago. So if you're still watching, Curtis, thank you for the switch. Uh, he actually sent me two switches. He worked at Baldor, maybe still does, not for sure, and sent me replacement bearings for this thing. I've had it on the shelf for a long time. Sent me a nice letter, and he sent all of the info uh, that covers this electric motor. So thank you, Curtis. Very, very nice of you. I'm finally getting around to this repair. Now, a little different uh, make as the switch. You can see we've got uh, a band of steel down here at the bottom that connects these two switches. And on the original one, we've got a, a wire. This one is like a fiberglass, you know, you know, circuit board type material. And then this one's just plastic. Spade connectors for this one. This one's soldered on. A little different, but the same, if uh, you get what I'm saying. I'm not going to put spade connectors on these because I don't like the things. I'm going to solder these wires onto this switch. That way we get a good positive connection.
So here's the switch that I rebuilt. At the end of this video, I'll put, uh, it'll pop up a link to the video. I'll try to remember to do that, where I rebuilt this switch several years ago. And if you look at the repairs that I did, I'm quite impressed. This side, I totally redone because I think it was cooked. This, even this contact arm was baked off near the end where the little contacts are. I made the contacts, I made the little copper rivets, uh, got it all back together and used it. And the reason why I didn't just put a replacement or a new one in, because I didn't have it at the, minute, at the moment and I needed the lathe. The reason that this one failed is not because of my repair. It's still holding strong and, and looks really good. It's the other side that I didn't, I don't think I did anything to it. I can't quite remember. It's been a long time, but you can see those contacts are just baked and gone. But the side that I repaired is still rocking along. There we go. Pretty good. Oh, come on. I think that'll work. Not beautiful, but it don't have to be. Alright, so I'm just waiting on something to go horribly wrong with this repair, but it has yet to happen. So I guess I just gotta bolt the switch back onto this plate and then put it back together. That was not bad at all. Back bearing. And that feels, feels like new. So no reason to replace it if it's not broken. We'll put a shot of grease in it though before we put this down in the belly of the beast. So I'd like to take just a second of your time and introduce you to a good friend and colleague of mine. This is Bradley Irvin. Hey, hey what's up? We have worked together for every day for the last eight or 10 years. Uh, yeah, it's been about that long. Yeah, I've yeah. been a pain in your ass for about that long, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we're, we're good buddies and Brad has recently come up with a product that is just now hitting the market. It is a very, very good hot sauce and I'm not even a hot sauce guy, I'm gonna be honest, but I like this stuff on my food. And I'm gonna put a link down in the description if you're interested, helping my buddy Brad get this startup business off the ground. He's also a US veteran. He won't say it, but I, but I will. So if you'd like to help him out, try a new hot sauce, check the link down in the description. So tell us a little bit about this. Right, um, so I personally enjoy the deep red heat of the Carolina Reaper pepper. The problem is, is that it's extremely hot. So I wanted to capture that heat 
without it melting your face. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not a novelty hot sauce. It's no, not, no, it's no, not no, the no. type of hot sauce that is just meant for burn. That's Definitely for sure. not. No, it's it's not a meme sauce. It is a flavor enhancer, um, and that was what I strive to do was balance heat and balance flavor. And I think that we accomplished that goal with this sauce. It's quite delicious. And I'm not just saying that because- right. Yeah, I like yeah. it. But I would appreciate uh, y'all giving yeah. us a try. Full Tang, is, Full -tang. The, is, the, is the name. And there is a link in the description. It's an Amazon link. So go down there, check it out. Help my good buddy Brad. I'd love to see that, uh, that business take off. Thanks. Thank you all. So it's Tesla and Cora. It's my buddy Brad's dog. Tesla, the inventor, not the car. Right. <laughs> what are you doing? So once you've had a lathe in your life, you just feel like there's something missing if that is taken away from you for some reason. Um, I use mine almost every day and it being broke down, it's just not an option. So this was top priority to get this thing back up and going. Hopefully what we did will fix it. I don't see why that it wouldn't, although there's always the chance. Uh, one shot of grease in each end. That's all I did. One, two shots a year per bearing is usually enough. So follow your recommended uh, intervals, but don't overdo it. I know it feels good. I think you're doing a good thing. Put an extra grease to them, one more pump. You know, I love this thing. It's not doing any good. In fact, it can do the opposite. Jam up all the works in there, cause them to get hot. Just enough is enough. So once or twice a year is all I ever grease this and very little, and it works just fine. So. There we go. Let's see if we can not break our back by getting this on the floor and then shimmy it over to the lathe and get it reinstalled. Okay. That worked. Let's see if we can get you up in here without losing a finger. We did it. I'm gonna let Elizabeth flip the switch. It's this one. You just flip it up. Okay. Ready? One, two, go ahead. Works. Fixed it. Boy's like, it's not loud now. There you go. Safety dog. <laughs> Core of the safety dog. <laughs> She's like, what did you, so like, what did you ah. Get this off of me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the safety dog. Quit. You gotta wear that. You're the safety dog. She's like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Score the safety pup. This is very safe, what you're doing right now. Are you the safety dog? You look like the safety dog. I get a picture. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm glad that the lathe is repaired. When you use a lathe every day and it just stops working that's a that's a problem and I, i'm not surprised to find that the switch went bad in this i've experienced this problem before and a lot of you may remember years ago when i originally had this problem and i pulled that switch out and actually rebuilt half of it and the part that i rebuilt is actually I'm not saying i did a great job or anything but it's still in good shape the other part that i didn't mess with this is what looks like failed so a uh, big thanks to the 
viewer who sent me that switch as well. I also want to mention that I'm going to do two videos this week. I'm going to try to, and I did two videos last week in case some of you didn't notice. So short one uh, for Saturday morning, at least for this Saturday morning, then hopefully this coming Sunday morning, I'll have another video for you where we do some machining using the lathe that, that I just repaired. I also want to mention, and I did mention this in text, but I want to just voice that I don't make anything from the advert that you've seen uh, from my buddy Brad on the hot sauce. He's just a very starting business, great friend of mine. You know, I'd love to see him succeed. And uh, you know, I've seen him work on this hot sauce for years, and I'd really like to see something happen from it. I enjoy it. I think you will as well. So check out that link in the description if you'd like to try a bottle of it. it It'd make me smile to see it succeed. So that's it for this week. Well, till next Sunday, till this coming Sunday. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.